If that was for Jesus, then let's do it better. Look for a man around you and check their hands. If they don't have a ring, tell them happy future Father's Day. Then if you, if you have somebody that has a ring, tell them happy Father's Day. Then ask them, why are they still not married? Don't ask me. <laughs> Now, can we celebrate our pastor, Pastor JT? Celebrate our pastor. Celebrate our pastor. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. If you don't know how to celebrate your pastor, I can't do it for you. I can't do it for you. Celebrate our pastor. Thank you so much for having me, sir. Thank you, First Lady. Thank you, Moses Arco. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. You know, we celebrated all the physical fathers that we can see, but can we celebrate our heavenly father? He's the father of all fathers. The Bible said, for we have not adopted the spirit of fear, but for the spirit that we've adopted is the spirit of sonship. And that's why we can cry, Abba. I was telling pastor yesterday, Abraham and the rest, they called God the names that experience God, not because that's God's name. They called names, they called places Jehovah Shammah because that was where they experienced God. But the difference between we and that generation is that we have him in us and that we can call him Father. We don't have to call him any other name but Father. Praise God. Imagine I'm calling Pastor, Pastor JT the road maker, the way maker. When it's not, his name actually is not the road maker. That's just a description of what he can do. But his name is Father. That's what we call him, Father. Just lift up your hands. Lift up your hands and begin to worship Father. I'm going to introduce a real simple song to you. that talks about the Father of, the fatherhood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Mandala, baradada. But we thank you for the miracles. We thank you for the testimonies. We thank you for what you're doing in this place. Abba. Oh, I belong to you. Yeah. That's all you have to say. Say it, everybody. Abba. With your hands lifted up like you want daddy to carry you. I belong to you. Not anyone else but you. Yeah, yeah. Say Abba. You own me daddy, daddy, daddy. I is so reckless and that's what we're about to declare in the room for the next 10 minutes can we worship God like you're the only one in the room yeah lift up your voice in the room this morning Spoke a word, 
you were singing over me. Oh, you've been so, so good to me. Come on, personal life. For I took a breath, you breathe your life in me. Oh, you've been so, so kind to me. I am chosen 
not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen. Jesus, my anchor to the ground, my hope and fair foundation. <laughs> you never let me down. I brought my faith in Jesus, my anchor to the ground, my hope and fair foundation. <laughs> you never. I put my fate in my echo to the ground. Hey. In the house of the Lord, there's fullness of joy. Can you rejoice right now? Because something's moving, something's changing. I can see his glory. This is heaven on earth. Something's moving, something's changing. I can feel the glory in the house. He said, something's moving. moving. You're not living the same. Things about to change for you. Something's moving. I can feel the glory in the world. This is heaven on earth. Miracles and wonders, sound of many waters, everyone there. Lightning and thunder, miracles and wonders, sound of many waters. One more time, lightning and thunder, miracles and wonders, sounds of many waters, everyone there. Lightning and thunder, miracles and wonders, sounds of many waters, everyone there. Just to say, lightning and thunder. You're not rejoicing like I want you to. The Holy Ghost is in this place. Lightning and thunder. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, lightning and thunder. Yeah. your place where you begin to rattle in the spirit right now. You just received your testimony. We bless your name, Jesus. I'll leave you with this song. The Lord gave me a song we said that is on my own. This is Ese Bube See how far you've brought me I'm so glad you found me worthy. I can see, I can tell, and I know it's your grace. All my days, I will sing your face. Come with me together right now. Yes, See how I'm so glad you found me. Whoa. Sing, I can see and I can tell. We have been hearing miracles in this place. It's your grace. 
all my days I will sing. Come and do it one more time again till it sinks into us. Yes, Bube. See how far you brought me. Yes, Bube. I'm so glad you found me. I can tell, and I know it's your grace. Oh my day. See, I will sing your praise. Now can we spread our hands in the room? Say, yes, everybody. See how far you brought me. Oh, yes, everybody. I'm so glad you found me. Because of what I've done, I did before, but I, I, can I can tell, and I know it's your grace. Oh my! Now can we sing it? We rejoice in the room. Hey, yes, baby. See how far you brought me. Yes, baby. Look at me, look at me, see how far you brought me, I can see, Lord, I can tell, I'm not shy about it, hey, 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 yes, hey, Bube, you have no idea where I'm coming from. You have no idea how long I was homeless. Till you found me. I was seeking to be seen. Till I met my Savior. I can tell. Hey, it's your grace. Oh, my day. I will see you. Said, I can see now. I can tell. And I know, and I know it's your grace. Oh my ladies, I will sing your praise. Now with your hands lifted up, this is your allegiance to daddy. I can see, I can tell, and I know it's your grace. Oh my days, I will see. You're too faithful to fail me. That's who you are. Yeah. You're too faithful to disappoint me. Just find yourself in the room with Daddy, moving yourself in my life. In with this song. I have just seconds. Bada, bada. Who is like you, Lord, in audience? Matchless love and beauty and that's what Nothing in this world can satisfy Cause Jesus, you're the come. The never on strike. Your treasure of my heart and of my soul. In my weakness, you are merciful. You have no idea this part. This part says, Redeemer of my past and present world. Order of my future days to come. Sing your presence. Your
they speak in other tongues. Hey, yeah, yeah. chains bro breaking here this morning. I see chains breaking. Chains are breaking here this morning. Every chain of limitation, every chain that has determined how far you can go, when God has more for you, I command by the grace of God in this house this morning that they be shattered in the name of Jesus. Can we celebrate this psalmist of God? Minister Neon this morning, hallelujah. While he was ministering, I saw people being pulled out of holes. Holes, you know, you are coming into a new place that you never knew God prepared for you. God is bringing you to a place you never knew God prepared for you. And things are soon going to make sense. Tell your neighbor, things are soon going to make sense. Things are soon going to make sense. I would just like you to lift up your hands and just bless the name of the Lord this morning. Bless the name of the Lord this morning. Bless him this morning. Thank him. Magnify his name. Lord, we worship you. We honor you, Baba God. We thank you. Baba Sila Bakota Bahakatila Bandi. Belenanga da Baha Pradila Haste. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Father, be glorified this morning. We worship you. We praise you. Thank you for all that you've done that we can't even talk about. Thank you for prison doors that have been opened up. Lord, we thank you for healings in the soul, healings in the body, healings in the mind. Thank you for healing our past, for redeeming our past. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we thank you because there is no father like you. No father like you. You are so loving, so forgiving, so true. Oh, we bless you, Father. Thank you, Father. I just like the sound of heaven to sing a song of blessing, the fatherly blessing this morning. And you can join as we worship God and also release the blessing of God this morning. Hallelujah. 
Sunday. Lord, we are so grateful and glad. Thank you, Lord, for revealing yourself to us, not just as our God or as the judge of the whole earth, but as our Father. Thank you for taking care of us. Thank you, Lord, for providing for us, for nurturing us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for healing us. Thank you for all that you do for us. We are so grateful this morning. We celebrate you, oh God. We celebrate you, our Father, this morning. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we worship you. 
speak to us again this morning. Touch us. Lord, heal us. Renew our minds. Light our paths. In the name of the Lord Jesus, let the devil be terrified. Let every work of darkness be destroyed. Let every lie be undone. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord, let the saints be edified. And let Jesus be revealed and glorified. Thank you, Abba Father. Can somebody celebrate the Lord this morning? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I'd like you to turn to any man that is close to you and tell them happy Father's Day. Whether they are married or not, tell them happy Father's Day. You know, some people, because you can't see a ring in the man's hand, you're not celebrating that man. That's a father in the making. Amen. Can you tell them happy Father's Day? Can we celebrate the father of this house? Can we celebrate Pastor JT? Happy Father's Day. Thank you so much for celebrating our pastor. Thank you for honoring him. He's a true father indeed. And I can testify to that. Amen. All right, I'd like you to please help me celebrate the sound of heaven. Before you take your seats this morning, I'd just like us to read this text together. Psalm 12 verse 1. Psalm 12 verse 1. Psalm 12 verse 1. Psalm 12, verse 1. Psalm 12. Psalm chapter 12, verse 1. Hallelujah. Thank you. All right. Ready, go. Help, Lord, for the godly man ceaseth, for the faithful fail from among the children of men. Let's take it one more time. Help, Lord. For the godly man ceaseth, for the faithful fail from among the children of men. I'd like you to please take your seat this morning as we share on godly fathers missing in action. M-I-A, godly fathers missing in action. I trust God this morning to bring a word to us on this powerful theme on this Fathering Sunday. I'd like to appreciate Pastor JT one more time for this opportunity to share the word. Godly fathers missing in action. If you read that text with me, you will notice that it was a cry. It wasn't just a statement to be read. It was a cry. It says, help Lord, for the godly man ceaseth. The version, I think maybe the New Living Translation or NIV says, the godly man is disappearing. The faithful man is vanishing from the earth. Disappearing, that means we had them there before. But suddenly, we can't see them anymore. They are beginning to either diminish in number or in quality, or they are no longer taking their place. It says the godly man ceaseth or is disappearing. The faithful man is failing or is vanishing from among the children of men. It's important for you to notice something from that text and also from what we're sharing this morning. It says a godly man, which means there is a possibility that we have men that are not godly. Or we have godly people that are not yet men. Maybe they are boys. They are godly, but they can't do this job. It takes a godly man to do this job. I'll preempt myself because I'm going to round up with this same text. There's a text in Judges. Where Gideon had already won victory over the Midianites. In Judges chapter 8. And he had caught the two priests of 
the Midianites, Ziba and Zalmunna. And Gideon told his son to fall upon them, which means to kill them. But the boy could not kill them. And it was this, these enemies that responded to Gideon. They said to him, in this particular context, I, you know, I've been looking for, for the particular version. It says, it takes a man to do a man's job. Fall on us yourself. This boy can't do it. There are jobs that only men can do. Only fathers can do. And godly fathers are that. Even if those godly people were boys, they still wouldn't be able to occupy that space. They still wouldn't be able to carry out that job. It says, fall on us yourself. It takes a man to do a man's job. It takes a man. What a man can do, a woman cannot do. What a man should do, a woman cannot do. They will try, they will occupy that space, but you will see that vacuum. You will see the vacuum. A man or a father is a leader. A man is a progenitor. A man is a visionary, a pioneer. A template. A man is not just an individual. He is a template, an example that others will follow. Whether he tells them to follow or not, they will follow. They will follow. He is a template. He is a platform for others to build upon. And he's also a judge. He's supposed to settle matters. He's meant to bring in, you know, settle disputes. That's where a man is. He's a defender. He's a projector. A man is not just that young boy that grows up and has erection, gives birth to children. A man is more than that. And then when you talk about the godliness aspect of it, who exactly is God? Just some attributes of God. God, number one, is consistent. Consistent. He's consistent. He's dependable. He's reliable. He's holy. As a matter of fact, His holiness is one of His highest attributes. He's loving. He's forgiving. So putting the two together, we're talking about that man who has all these attributes and has come of age. But when we now want to define this MIA aspect of it, you will see things that will shock you this morning. This is from the encyclopedia, from the dictionary. What does it mean to be missing in action? An MIA is a casualty classification assigned to combatants. Military chaplains, combat medics, and prisoners of war who are reported missing during wartime or ceasefire. They may have been killed, wounded, captured, executed, or deserted. They have not returned from a battle. Their body has not been found. And they are not thought to have been captured. But guess what? These MIAs are in their thousands. And because we don't know their whereabouts, they still get the benefits that accrue to them as if they were occupying their position. So you can have a man that you assume to be a father and he's not playing his role as father. But he's getting the benefits that accrue to fatherhood. So you're expecting more, you are giving more than you are getting. Somebody said recently, the problem in Africa is not leadership. But we've always heard that the problem was leadership. He said leadership is the fruit of the problem. But the root of the problem is fatherlessness. And guess what? This is not just about Africa. It extends to the whole world. Fatherlessness is the root of the problem. Because fathers and men are not taking their place. A lot of things have gone awry. What does it mean to be fatherless? 
several meanings. It either means to be fathered less than you should be fathered. Or for there to be an absentee father totally. Where there is maybe the case of a divorce and there is no father at all. Or a father that is there but emotionally absent. Or a father that doesn't even know what it means to be a father. Now you'll be like, okay, so how did we get here? We're coming from a long place. From a distant place. History will have us know that back in the days, they used to have an agrarian society where the major work was hunting and gathering and farming. And back in those days when, you know, that was their major kind of trade. Fathers, men had platforms through which they could raise their boys. When you look at motherhood, it's not so difficult for a girl to become a mother. A lot of things help them. A lot of things. Let's begin from this platform I'm talking about. Till today, in spite of and despite civilization, we still have kitchens. Which is a solid platform for girls to be raised into womanhood. The kitchen is still available, in spite of all the restaurants everywhere. So you see a girl, his mother talking to her about what it means to become a woman. Not just about cooking. While they are cooking, she's training that girl. She's talking to that girl. She's raising that girl. She's bringing womanhood out of that girl. Telling her, oh, this is how to take care of your husband when you grow up. This is how to take care of your home. This is how to do the domestic chores. This is how to fix this and fix that. Solid platform. What platforms do fathers have today? TV. TV. No platform. Most fathers get up in the morning, go to work, come back home at night, clueless on what to do with raising their kids. You know, I've always asked myself this question. What exactly is home training? Have you asked that question before? You go somewhere and somebody says you don't have home training. There was never a time my parents sat me down and said, this is home training time. Did it happen in your home? Where they sat you down and said, this is home training time. How come they are demanding of me what was never available? You don't have home training. Okay, when was it available for me to get home training? Even the best of homes, there was never a time we sat down together and said, this is home training time. This is what it means to have been trained from the home. Because home training circles around two things. Correction and instructions. Every child wants to do whatever comes to their mind. But it's that child whose parents deem it fit to always step in and correct, provide correction. And also provide instruction. That is the one that gets home training. So if there's no platform available for boys to be raised into manhood, we will not have, we will, we will see this scripture happening. We will see godly men disappearing. Disappearing from the face of the earth. We see godly men disappearing from the face of the earth. But this was not God's plan. This was not God's plan. Also, when you look at it from the point of view of what it takes for a woman to become a mother, there's also a lot that helps for you to know that I'm now a mother. Because when a man deposits semen, he's done with what his role is in the fatherhood game. But the woman takes it in and for the next nine months, she's running with that child inside her. There is no way she won't know that she's becoming a mother. If she, does, if she didn't get it the first month, she won't miss it in the second month. If she misses it in the second month, <laughs> even if she denies it, like some of the movies we used to watch back then, you see a lady that you know, has protruded on me and say, I'm not pregnant. Then what is there? Even if she denies it, her body, you know, physiology, everything will be telling her something is going on inside you. You are becoming someone, someone different. But a man can go on running his job. He's the father of that child, running his job. The day he knows that he's now a father is the day they put the baby in his hands. So if there was nobody available to instruct and guide, he would just find himself as a father. Not knowing 
what the demands are and what role is to play he wants to do it but he has not been trained he has not been raised so he's missing in action but guess what he can still be getting all the benefits because the children will call him daddy hallelujah and you know shockingly this has spanned into the church and has affected the society I know this is not an area everybody where anybody wants to go into but you know we don't even want to talk about what ungodly fathers do against children we're talking about the fact that fathers are not even playing their role at all we're not talking about the injuries being inflicted yet we're talking about not taking your place at all because if you want to go into the injuries being inflicted that's a different ball game but we're talking about not even playing your role not even occupying your place you know there's some there's a term called provision in accounting terminologies provision it's called provision for bad debts so when a transaction is carried out and i'm yet to be paid i put it under what is called receivables receivables so that receivable is just a terminology it means the money's been owed me but if the end of the year is coming close and the monies have not come in accounting concepts demand of me to make what we call provision for this debt because it's becoming a bad debt so i make that provision it's like making money available for money that i've not received guess what if that money doesn't come in this provision will be used up so the provision is for a bad debt in case it happens but if it doesn't happen then we can get but if it's not if the debt doesn't get paid then that provision is used up so provisions are made for these mias and are used up but they are not playing their role look at another definition of mia a person whose whereabouts are unknown or who should have been around to help or participate but didn't show up who should have been around to help or participate but didn't show up now just for us to see some very important things some qualities of a godly father some qualities of a godly father one of the qualities of a godly father is found in first john chapter 2 verse 13 first john 2 verse 13 first john 2 verse 13 it has to do with knowledge or what you call experience it says i write unto you fathers because you have known him this is talking about the lord that is from the beginning i write unto you okay young men because you have overcome the wicked one i write unto you little children because you have known the father verse 14 next verse i write unto you fathers look at it again because you have known him knowledge is a critical quality of a father it's usually said that what a little child will not see if he climbs on top of a tree even on top of skyscrapers a father will see sitting down not because of sight but because of insight because of experience because of knowledge fathers can tell where things will turn it's also often said that when a tree is being caught in the forest, fathers can tell where that tree will turn, where it will fall. We need fathers. We need their experience. We need their knowledge. We need their guidance. We need their illumination. We need fathers. We need fathers. We need fathers. While I was preparing for this, at some point in time, I was crying. Not because I didn't have a good father but because of the vacuum in our society in our churches in homes because of lack of fatherhood on a day like this it's important we deal with this very important matter so that we don't raise another generation of people without true and godly fathers what we were talking about previously in terms of the platforms we need to consciously create those platforms or else we'll raise another generation of young boys who are not fathers who are not men 
because it takes a man to raise another man and you know what not just your instructions your lifestyle more than what you are saying what you are watching are the things that we usually follow so that i mean you you see a contradiction if you see a father doing something different from what he's saying so you are like confused as to what to follow which one am i going to follow the lifestyle is stronger than the words so you are likely to tilt towards the lifestyle than the words no matter how sweet the words are much is caught than is being taught so even you, though you are teaching something else what you are doing is what the child will follow can godly fathers arise again in this generation at all levels in the family in the church in the society we've been crying for a change in our country but where are the fathers that can chart the course that can show the way that can set the example that can tell us we can do it that can tell us it is possible a father is a hero an example showing you that you can dare the impossible and achieve more and this, these are not flattery words we have a father in this house because he has a father that has raised him up and that we can see the examples in both of them a songwriter said lord i want to be just like you because my son just wants to be like me i want to be a holy example for his innocent eyes to see not his ears to hear alone his innocent eyes to see lord let me be a living example that my little boy can read i want to be just like you because he wants to be just like me we want to be like our fathers we want to be like men that god has put ahead of us but we want examples that we can follow both in their words and in their walk godly fathers have knowledge of course on a day like this we have to talk about the father god because it's the best example the most outstanding figure of the fatherhood that anyone should pattern after even if you lost your earthly father when you were young you have a father in god if you get to know him enough that vacuum will be covered up if you need a physical example it will send a true father your way just like a young boy true life story who was believing god for an admission and had done you know all the exams jam wask you know ssc again and again he was now doing jam again and again but he was not getting admitted to the school this was like his third time and he just blotted out in anger in his church one day after service i can gain admission again this year because i don't know anybody in school what's all this rubbish it's, it's pastor got to hear and his pastor sent for him and said what did you just say and he repeated himself and his pastor assured him that he had a father in god that whatever connection he needs in the school god's legs are the longest psalm 147 verse 10 and 11 says god does not delight in the strength of horses nor does he take pleasure in the legs of men he delights in those who hope for his mercy and those who fear him so this man of god quoted this scripture to this young boy and told him go back to school you will get admission this year the boy went back to school with his results that he you know they'd already been rejected some of the lists had come out and he wasn't given admission so he just went to school in faith that something was going to happen on his way to his faculty social sciences he was walking because of course he didn't have his father available to carry him around chauffeur him and all that took you know buses and all that and was walking into the school premises a car just, you know, drive, I mean, drove by and parked by him and said, w w w young man, please, can you show us the way to social science faculty? He said, yes, I can show you the way, but I'm also going there. Oh, if you're going there, then hop into the car. So this boy entered into the car and a conversation ensued. There was another boy in the car, this man's biological son. This other boy, let's call him child of God. Say child of God. This other boy, call him child of the man. So they drove to social science faculty, parked there. And after the conversation, this father got to know that this child of God was seeking admission to the same department, just like his son. So the man said, oh, no problem. I know the dean. 
collected both of them's documents and presented it to the dean. I've come to seek admission for my two sons. Few weeks after, the dean re reverts to the man and said, oh, so sorry, sir. I was able to get admission only for one of them. And guess what? It was the child of God. God can use anybody's father to get anything done for you. He is God like that. He is father like that. He is God like that. Kenneth Hagin will say, God may be just God to the world. George to the sinner. But he's father to me. Does somebody have a father in God this morning? Can you just praise him this morning? Celebrate his name this morning. He's father to me. We're in dire need of fathers. Dire need of fathers. Dire need of fathers. Thank God for fatherhood available at the birth of Benjamin. In Genesis 35, 18. Benjamin was being birthed in pain. And his mom was about to die. His mom gave him a name, Benoni or Benoni. Which meant son of my sorrow. Thank God for a father that was available. Who changed his name to Benjamin. It came to pass as her soul was in, the, was in the pattern for she died. That she called his name Benoni. But his father called him Benjamin. Benoni means son of my sorrow. That boy will have lived with that sorrowful stuff all through his life. But the father changed it to son of my right hand. Fathers are in dire need. The mother couldn't see more beyond what she was experiencing. She was dying. But the father could see ahead that this is a destiny. We can't catch this destiny with the wrong name. Change this name to Benjamin. What about Jacob? Jacob, when, when his son, Joseph, brought the two sons to him, Manasseh and Ephraim, in Genesis 48. And Joseph presented the elderly one on his right hand, the father's right hand, the younger one on his father's left hand. But this man of God, this father, can see into this boy's future and turn his hand this way and bless them like this because of what he could see. He wasn't seeing what Joseph was seeing. It takes fatherhood to correct some things, to align some things. What about Abraham? father Abraham God said how will I do a thing and hide it from Abraham seeing that he will become a great nation in Genesis 18 and he will command his children after him fatherhood is so critical he will command his children he will train his children after him so I won't hide anything from him so that he can have a good and godly legacy the Bible says a good man leaves inheritance for his children's children not only physical inheritance, not only houses and cars, but a good legacy, a good name, a good blessing. Like we just sang earlier on. And like the priests will release upon the children of Israel because it was like a father to them every time, from time to time. Israel at some point in time, they were being ruled, you know, and led by judges. But they now desired kings like other nations. And they got a king for themselves. Who turned out not to be a godly father? In the person of Saul. They rejected, so to speak, God. They rejected Samuel. And they received for themselves a figure in the person of Saul. Who wasn't a godly father to them. God had warned them, but they didn't listen. Just like some of us have experienced the wrong fathering from some functionaries that we've, you know, served under or stayed under. And they didn't present God properly to us. They didn't show a godly lifestyle to us. Some of us have been wounded. We've lost hope and trust in the church system. Some people have even departed from churches because of those kind of experiences. Of wrong presentation of fatherhood and guess what those fathers are still getting the benefits the honor the regards just like the MIA thing because being fatherless doesn't mean there's that there isn't a father figure 
it just means the father may not be playing his role or is clueless or is emotionally absent and like we've learned this morning it's not just about that man he may necessarily not want to be wicked but maybe he has not been properly raised he has not been trained properly like we usually say he didn't have home training he was not corrected when he did wrong things he was left to his own device and he just kept on on the wrong path till now he's a man and it's difficult for us not to say he's not a man but he's not playing the role of a man he's not playing the role of a father but he's a father already hallelujah god is bringing a word to us this morning as we prepare for the new generation it's father's day and you know like fathers will say all fathers are always saying oh why do they celebrate mothers again and again and again we should celebrate mothers a lot of them are playing their role and it's true we should celebrate motherhood because even when the father is absent the mother has to be there for the child and though there's a vacuum because of fatherlessness the mothers try to fill that vacuum to the extent that they can can we celebrate motherhood this morning please we should celebrate motherhood we should celebrate motherhood there are sacrifices there are late nights sleepless nights pains that they can't even express in tears confusion as to what the child needs sometimes you watch mother say this is what the child wants and i'm like i'm not sure they just keep making guesses and keep responding to the guesses what exactly does this child want the child is crying they say the child wants to sleep he's crying again they say the child wants to eat he's crying again the child wants to play how do you know all this hallelujah amen but much more than the need to keep celebrating motherhood we cannot remove the need for fathers in the society and our place as fathers is so crucial and critical and in spite of all the filling up that mothers have been doing they can't take that place they can't Will the godly fathers now rise? Will the godly fathers now take their place? Will the godly fathers now begin to learn the ropes, begin to know the things to be done, begin to read, begin to study, begin to rise to the game? Where we are going, we have not even scratched the surface at all. Do you know where we are going, sir? God wants fathers, godly fathers, to father presidents not just father homes not just interpret your own dreams interpret the king's dream and provide direction for the nation that's what God that's, that's the vision the vision of God is not just to father your own home if you are failing in that then how do you qualify for the bigger one God wants fathers. Look at it in Genesis 45. Genesis 45. Then, verse 8. Let's go to verse 8 because of our time. So now, it was, it was not you that sent me hither, but God. And he had made me a what? Father to Pharaoh. Not just father to my family. Or father to my church. We have a lot of fathers in churches, but we don't have fathers to nations. So a nation, so you see, the revival we've been crying about will start from the home. It will start from the home. There will be repentance, consecration, and a lot of reconciliation on the home front, which will spill into the churches and then affect the society. Every revival must leave its footprint on the economy, on the political, on every aspect of a society. It will affect everything. So if the nation is in the state it is now, we can only trace it back to the homes and the process and methods with which we are raising fathers and raising men. Godly men, godly fathers are disappearing. We used to have them before. But it looks like something went wrong somewhere. 
the platform disappeared that can be used to raise them. Not to say all of us should go back into farming. If we could say that, then we would say that, I mean, that's the solution. But we have to create those platforms deliberately. Deliberately. Some people were able to create it through taking their sons for fishing. They take their sons for fishing on weekends and they are able to talk to their sons. Because it's an informal thing, not a formal arrangement. A classroom setting can fix this issue. There has to be a proper relationship where there can be truth and honesty. Fathers have to tell their sons where they missed it. So the sons don't put their legs into the same pitfalls. We can't keep saying, oh no, you can't. See, there is such a thing that has to do with dishonor. That is wrong. But we're talking about truth and honesty. Transparency. How can I say, one day I asked my dad. He had gotten really, really, really transparent about some things. And told me some things that there is no way I would have known. Some of the mistakes he made, some of the errors he committed, told me everything. So I asked him, why did you tell me all this? Because the usual thing is to hide those things from the sons. They mustn't know about it. Even if they find out, they should pretend as if they don't know. But he told me everything. But guess what? Those mistakes, I found it hard to make them. If I got to discover without him telling me, I likely would make them. But because he told me, I was healed. And I was strong enough not to make those mistakes. He got transparent with me to a very, very, you know, I'm like, ah. And it was so difficult to make the same mistakes. So I asked him recently, I said, why, Dad, why did you tell us all those things? Because he just got bare with everybody and told us this is what's been happening, this is what's been happening, forgive me. I'm like, ah. But all of us were healed and were strong enough not to make those mistakes. So I asked him, I said, why did you tell us all that? Why did you get so bare? Why did you get so vulnerable? And he said to me, he said, if I'm a true father, I will not want you to make the same mistakes I made. And if God helped me out of those mistakes, the only way God can help you not to make them is for me to show you how I missed it. So that you don't need, you know, put your leg in the same pitfalls and then you can get it right. And my respect for him went to another level, went off the road. Can we celebrate my father this morning, please? It is wrong for sons to go looking for the errors of their father. But it is also proper for fathers to show their scars. Because our father did so. Jesus showed his scars. Showed his scars. Hallelujah. Praise God. It takes a man to do a man's job. It takes a man. There are boys in the ministry, but they can't dare the kind of things that fathers can do. Even if those fathers were in error, they can't dare it. Because they are still gatekeepers. And you must never dishonor them. Never. Saul had been sacked by God. But he was still the king for another 30 something years. Just like MIA, getting all the resources, all the benefits, all the honor of being a king, but he had been sacked. But David dared not go speaking critically or judgmentally against him. So if you are his son here today, the way is not to criticize fathers. Never dare it. Never judge them because it's not in your place. God left Saul there for 30 something years. He was raising his David. If you are a David, stay in hiding. Stay in the cave. Stay in training. Stay in learning. Stay in reading. Stay in praying. Stay in fasting. Stay in seeking God. You're not yet married. You have, you know, an opportunity to get it right. Your wife is expecting you not just to be a husband, but to be a father. Because some women didn't get an opportunity to have a godly father. 
So they are looking for that father in you. Your children are looking up to you as a godly father. The society is looking up to you as a godly father. Once upon a time, I went to a cyber cafe. And I was just trying to work my stuff, you know, on the computer. Back in the days when cyber cafes were, you know, we didn't have so much phones that had, you know, all the stuff. And before you use the internet, you had to go to the cyber cafe. So while I was doing my thing on the cyber cafe, there were some little boys that were scouting the net for pornography. Naturally, I'm supposed to mind my business. But the fatherhood instinct in me didn't allow me. I shouted at them. And snapped them out of that rubbish. Fathers have to get up. You can't keep minding your business. There's a popular proverb. Someone gives birth, but the whole world helps them raise that child. Everybody is involved in raising that child. It's also often said that an elder cannot be in the market square. And the head of a little child will be slant. You know why? Because the elders will always help you adjust it. The younger people will just keep carrying the baby around. They want their own comfort. But the elders, they want that child to see tomorrow. Will the godly fathers arise in the house, in the homes, in the home front, in the church front, in the society? You don't need to have put a ring into a, a woman's hand before you start acting in the place of, of fatherhood. There are younger people that are looking up to you for exemplary living. And this is not just about the fact that God can forgive us. Why don't we set the right examples? Because one of the definitions of fatherhood is that we are templates. And this template, once it's cast, it begins to reproduce itself. Ask yourself, what kind of reproduction will I bring forth if God were to reproduce me in someone else? What kind of offspring will it be? Will the godly fathers now arise? Will they take their place? Will they seek the Lord? Will they cry to God to realign them with his plan, with his purpose, with his intent? It's Father's Day again. But fathers have been missing in action. Missing in action. But I believe God is bringing a word of healing. He's bringing a word of deliverance. He's bringing a word of rescue. He's bringing a word for us to return to those ancient landmarks. Those ancient paths. And set things straight again. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are different kinds of fathers. Different kinds of fathers. There is, you know, the authoritarian father. Who provides rules and regulation but no relationship. Rules and regulation but no relationship. I'm sure a lot of us went through those kind of fathering. Amen. The lion of the tribe of your home. You can't be in the living room when daddy is there. He has a special cup, a special spoon, a special seat. Amen. You can't even enter his room. He has never hugged you before. Never. Yet it's said that a child, a girl child needs minimum of four, two to four hugs a day. For that child to be secure. And to be able to make quality decisions. So that she's used to it already. Before some wicked and unreasonable boys start giving hugs that will lead the girl astray. Amen. So the, this impact is not just, just not just on boys, but also on girl child too. Amen. Authoritarian father. There is the indulgent father. The father that is relational but no rules. He's just indulging. Anything goes. He doesn't see anything. The child dresses scantily and goes out. The father doesn't say anything. He's not concerned. He's indulgent. Everything goes with him. I just want my baby girl to be fine. Buys him anything. Chocolate, everything. Flies him everywhere. No, no, no rules, no regulation, no structure. Indulgent father. There's the uninvolved father. Nothing at all. No rules, no regulation, no relationship. Uninvolved. Totally clueless. Totally absent. And there is the authoritative father. Which is the one we present to you today. 
it provides rules and also provides relationship and we all need to repent as men and take our place in society it starts with me a man wanted to change the world but he tried hard he couldn't change the world so he decided to change his continent tried to change his continent but he couldn't so he said i'll change my country tried hard to change his country but he couldn't change his country so he said i'll change my city couldn't change his city so he said okay i'll change my family it's my family after all he still couldn't change his family then he resolved i'll change me the transformed me will change my family my transformed family will affect my estate my city my nation and ultimately my world is somebody in for this change this morning can you rise to your feet this morning and open your mouth and begin to talk to the Lord the greatest father of all can you talk to the Lord this morning the word of God has come to you will the godly fathers now arise Lende barakite prakosteke le bagradi da manda. Kilo bakateke sile bangra hatilamde. Hele boko shalabane se balota palagida e. Ile barala ya kabrade. Silo barakide la balage ya lebo shalabale ya. Somebody ask the Lord to heal you of every injury caused by that vacuum in the name of Jesus. Somebody say, Lord, heal me in every injury. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. I want us to pray this prayer. It's a prayer that is extensive. It covers different areas. I want us to ask God. God, remove Saul. God, remove Saul. Remove every soul in any area of my life. Why should you have a father that is missing in action? You are expecting so much, but you are not getting anything. That kind of boy or girl will just be stuck. Because fathers defend and project. Just like Papa God. The Bible says God is a son and a shield. Son projects. Shield protects and defends two functions of fathers gotten from God they provide protection for their household but they also project their family name they project their children they project their spouses they project their, their I mean everything about their, their family but if there's a soul in your life it will not shield and it will not project say father remove every soul in any aspect and replace them with David in the name of Jesus raise your voice and pray Pray for our country. 
Pray for our churches. Pray for our homes. Pray for our lives. Lord, remove soul. Dethrone every soul. Dethrone every soul. Dethrone every soul. Let David be enthroned. Let your David be enthroned. In the name of Jesus. Dethrone every soul. Let your David be enthroned. Salama kete barabaria, ata barakete bragila, ora kata bragita basile katomba la haya. E barakete sa, salada ba bragete, e reboko sata baya, a rekoto bragete, e la baramande katobariane. In Jesus' mighty name. In closing this morning, I want you to say, Lord, raise up our generation. Godly fathers in every facet, in every institution, in every aspect of our existence. Raise up in our generation. Godly fathers. See, it takes godly fathers to return us to the Lord. It takes godly fathers to set examples for us. It takes godly fathers to set the proper templates. It takes godly fathers to be our heroes. It takes godly fathers to be beacons. It takes godly fathers for us to access wisdom, to access guidance, to access help, to access the lifting hand, to access projection. So much is missing because of lack of godly fathers. Say, Father, raise up godly fathers in the name of Jesus, in the banks, in the media world, in the entertainment. Raise your voice and pray this morning. Raise up for us godly fathers. Raise up for us godly fathers. Lord, raise us up as godly fathers and raise up for us godly fathers. Raise us up as godly fathers. Raise up for us godly fathers in every aspect of our existence, in the homes, in the communities, in the estates, in the cities, in the political scene, in the economic scene, in the banking world, in the churches. Raise up godly fathers. We need more godly fathers. Raise up, oh God, godly fathers, that men will take their place, that will not abdicate our responsibility. Lord, raise us up. Heal us and raise us up. Raise up, oh God, godly fathers. 